Hey everyone, uh, this is Matt, the mortgage guy with topic number two. And as we hinted in uh, episode one, we're going to talk about how our bubbles formed. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing really, really well. So one of the things that um, I hear a lot of talk and nonsense about today is we are in a bubble. And, they, and people are saying that they've been in real estate for five years and they're pointing at the OA chart and saying, hey, price is price. And uh, that's just not the case. We both know it's payment. And, and we're actually at a relatively healthy payment today. But we've got, I have to acknowledge that there are a few policy decisions that could happen that could create the monster of all real estate bubbles. And let's be clear, I want to avoid that. Bubbles are painful. I profited from the last one. My book talks about it. So we'll be fine. But I don't like seeing the pain in everyday life that happens when bubbles pop. So I thought we would just talk about it. So how are bubbles formed in residential real estate? Right. Yeah, I'm with you where, um, you know, I, when I tell people who come to me and say, you know, is there going to be a foreclosure crisis? Is there going to be, you know, some 30% correction? Are we in a bubble? Um, I tell them I would benefit a lot from it. And I'd buy a lot of real estate and it would be, it would be great for me and my net worth and, and personally. But one, I don't see it. And two, I don't root for it. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, there's certain indicators and affordability is a huge one. I saw a cool stat yesterday um, that relates to this because so many people compare 06, 07, 08. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, if they look at one simple metric, they can say, oh, look, prices went up or this went up. And, and uh, the metric that, that was cool that I saw yesterday, if you take what a house rents for mm -hmm. and you have to take the annual figure. So if it's $1,000 a month, annual figure is 12,000. Mm -hmm. You times that by 17. Okay. That's about where we're at rent versus home price on average. Okay. In 2006, that number was at 24. Oh, so it was, you know, whatever that is 30 something percent higher than it is today. Yeah. And the funny part is I looked at it and I said, you know, so judging on that metric rent versus what a home value is, mm -hmm. we're nowhere close to where yeah. we were back then. And, you know, that's a good affordability metric because people have to rent or they have to buy. Like Correct. you don't have other choices. You're, you're renting a house or, you're, or you bought the house. Yeah. And um, it didn't even account for inflation. And that was something I thought was kind of crazy. We're 35% we're, um, lower than we were back then. And mm -hmm. we're not even accounting for inflation, which would, would I guess it, it counts for rent though too, right? Inflation. Well, what's so not maybe, included in that is income inflation. That's not included in that, right? Uh, which is cool. But again, we are nowhere close to 08 peaks because again, it's the affordability, right? And again, every state has a different number. So go look it up. I'm not going to do that work for you. Affordability is simple. The median, um, the median price interest rate, because it's all payment driven and income. And they want to make sure that the average person can afford the average home with the average mortgage. And today in my market, it's remarkably affordable. If it gets to 20, it's not. One in five versus one in two is a very different story. So this is how this is how bubbles are formed. And we are at the risk. We are in what I would call pretty healthy market today. But it's risky today. We could go parabolic and parabolic's bad. And what I mean by that is I believe we are on the cusp of inventory showing up. If inventory shows up, it will temper prices. And that's what we need. We need to go from record low inventory back to average inventory. And if that happens, prices will slow down. We need prices to slow down today. But if we stay at record low inventory another 12 months and we add a 15K credit, external stimuli, bubble forming, if uh, Fannie or Freddie or whatever, right? again, an external stimuli says, you know what? If you're a first time buyer, we will give you a 0.9% 30 year mortgage for whatever reason, right? They can, they can <laughs> do that, right? I just heard yesterday yeah. that Canada, Canada has mortgages, they've done mortgages under 1%. Now they're not fixed for 30 years, they're five and 25 or whatever, but still, damn, 30, you know, that's cheap ass money. So again, yeah. <laughs> external stimuli in an environment of no supply, bad. And then the last thing, the coup de gras, the thing that takes a healthy market that makes it go parabolic and then makes it explode, is when your hairdresser, your Uber driver, you know, your next door neighbor dog walker is talking about the 50K they made flipping a contract or whatever, right? So we, we're healthy today. 
we do have some external stimuli risk that could take this parabolic. And then we've got to watch the chatter on real estate. I don't hear it today. I actually still hear more multifamily, bigger is better and go buy 50 units because I'm Grant Cardone. But if we ever hear flippers or, you know, uh, buy and hold or whatever, flipping contracts, pick up at the, you know, your local coffee talk, watch out. So I don't think we're there yet, but that's how bubbles are formed. And again, to remind everybody, I lived through this before. I invested through it. The first house I bought went from 107 to 264 in three years. That is nuts. And oh, by the way, I had eight of those, seven or eight of those. And then it went all the way down to 75 grand. 264 to 75. Nothing changed in the house. The rent never changed. It was 1100 when I bought it. It was 1100 when I sold it. And when I tried to buy wow. it back at 75, it was 1100. That's a bubble. And, you know, we right. we're at risk 2021, 2022 could see a real estate bubble form in residential properties. And I'm very concerned about that. So what do you think? I'm, I'm with you. And I, and I think just like you said, we're at this place where there, there can be some things that happen that level us off yeah. and create a really stable environment, or we can go the other way and it can get a little bit dicey. I think, like you said, if we see increased inventory, uh, I saw a stat about builders, you know, building 30% more homes. They understand that there's a ton of demand. And if they're smart and they, you know, they're going to build as fast as they possibly can. So that inventory paired with um, once there's a little bit more certainty with people's health and the pandemic and whatnot, people are going to sell their houses is the hope, right? From mm -hmm. people like us that want a stable exactly. market. Um, I, the, the latest stuff that's out and I kind of changed on this as far as rate forecast, third and fourth quarter of 2020, I was thinking lenders, once they got capacity under control, could kind of open the floodgates and lower rates. Mm. I've since changed my stance. And I think that the Mortgage Bankers Association, National Association of Realtors, Fannie, Freddie, everybody thinks that rates are going to go up slightly mm. in 2021, which in my opinion is super healthy for the real estate market. If rates go up to three and a quarter, it's not a huge jump, but it's enough to, you know, quell demand. Yeah. If we increase inventory and quell demand, we'll get a little bit more yeah. sane and it won't be 15 offers and, yeah. and the madness that, that we saw in 2020. And again, just to play that out, that's what, that's all these, we need to temper demand. Cause right now I would say the balloon is full, right? It's currently no threat of popping, but the balloon is full. If you add any external stimuli, right? You take interest rates from 2.75 to two, you have a risk. You, you add a tax credit risk, um, you know, whatever, right? You, you add external stimuli for owner occupant ownership. The, the full balloon is at risk of getting bigger and ultimately popping. What takes air out of it is rising rates because again, just to talk about my market, let's say Fresno is 48 today. Nothing else changes except rate go from 2.75 to three and a quarter. That doesn't sound like a lot, but the payment would go up, I don't know, a hundred bucks, which would take affordability from 48 to probably 45 or 44. So again, it's price rate and, and income. So uh, I think this needs to happen. And again, what else could happen is you can add inventory. You add choices. You, you go from 17 offers in 24 hours to two. It's still a healthy market, but you don't have bidding wars. You don't have people waving. There are people waving appraisal conditions today. Mike, I've got people listen to this. This is what's happening. And I'm talking to hundreds of people. 560 list price. They offer 600,000. It used to be you just waive the appraisal contingency. Now they're saying, you're pretty sure my file's good, right? Can I waive my loan contingency too? <gasps> so no loan contingency, no appraisal contingency. Offer 600 on a house that's already probably priced at the top at 560. Yeah. That offer doesn't get accepted. They're in contract at 625. Oh so, God. I mean, that's that's what happens in a market like this with these external factors fueling demand. And that's why we're screaming from the rooftops. Do not add any more fuel to this fire. Mm -hmm. We want the opposite. We want a little splash of water. Yes, three and please. Quarter interest rates. Yeah, take interest rates up, <laughs> add inventory, freaking heck, do them both because <laughs> I do not want a bubble. And again, 
as we said in episode one, a bubble would be fine for me. I know how to operate. I don't need to own all my stuff. If you ever want to overpay for my real estate, I will gladly <laughs> sell it to you. And right. I'll just sit on the sidelines and wait. I've lived through the last crisis. I have 20 years of investing through the worst bubble and survived and thrived. I'll do it again. I just don't want to see it happen to other people. Um, so yeah, I would welcome more inventory. I'd love inventory to double across the country. And I would love rates to go back to, I'd even take rates at three and a half. Three and a half is still historically low, but it'll be enough right. to slow people down. Cool, man. Well, I just want to talk about this bubble and uh, yeah, it's just something that had to be said. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, great combo.